meet uh, Donna Adelson from Coral Springs, Florida. I want to hear all about you, Donna. Let's go. Well, um, I'm a domestic coordinator. A domestic coordinator? Yes. Okay. I'm responsible for the activities, classes, and lessons of my son, Robert, who is 16, Charlie, who is 12, Wendy, who is 10, my husband, Harvey, who's in the audience, and my dog, Sam. All right. And how old is Sam? Five. Five. Well, good. Give, give him our best. Thank nice you. to have you here. And this follows work done. Making a consonant is going to be worth it. Can we get eight? Yeah. All right. So I'm writing on this. Again, person is a category. Stu, still need to return a letter, please. Mustard maker. Nope. Mustard still maker. <laughs> Stu. Um, H, please. Yes, there's one H. Donna. F. Yes. Uh, Mischief maker. Yeah, that's... Nice. You are listening to the Roberta Glass True Crime Report, putting the true back in true crime. From New York City, Roberta Glass is now on the record. We're going to go mano y mano. It's actually the craziest fact in this entire case, and there's a lot of crazy facts. Mano y mano. Okay, how is everybody? I'm so excited for today's show. Got on the great Sonny Tanner, who has appeared on this channel before, went to Charlie Adelson's trial, has a lot to say about the Adelson case, and for the first time ever, Patty from Patty's Playhouse. I believe we're simulcasting on her channel. Welcome, welcome, everybody. She talks about the Adelson case. And first off, I just want to apologize for not having the pre show. It's a long story. I'll get to it tomorrow. But first off, uh, Patty, can you talk a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in the Adelson case? Well, I live in Tallahassee. Florida. And I've been interested in the case since the poor man was shot in his garage. And it's just been a thing ever since. No one knew for two years anything that was going on or why. And then all of a sudden you see what we know now is Catherine doing a perp walk. And um, and then our first trial we watched, I watched it from my office. And then the second trial I watched for my office. And then the third trial, I was privileged enough to go. And do you, what was the difference, you think, of, of going in person and watching it on, on TV? Gosh, it was just all so real. It was meeting friends of Dan Markell and then meeting his mother. It really was impactful to my life, not just as a person following true crime made it very real or real like these are people that could just be we i probably i could have passed them on 75 while they were coming up here to murder someone you know it just my mind just went racing for quite a few hours the first day i was overwhelmed by it and sunny tanner uh can you talk a little bit about yourself and how you got interest in this trial Hi, thanks for having me on again. Um, well, I've always been a follower of court cases and true crime. Um, and back in 2017, I was seated on a grand jury in the Southern District of Florida, and that ran for 18 months. And what an uh, in- impact that had on me. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg uh, was what is our Palm Beach County state attorney. Uh, So this all happened shortly after the bump. Uh, Dave was in the news. He actually 
graduated Harvard with Dan and was friends with Dan. And, you know, they, Dan and Dave, you, they're just what every grandmother here in Florida would say, a nice Jewish boy, just a genuine, hardworking, you know, you just look at them and you could see that they're doing what they love. And, and it was when I, I heard who got arrested, I was just flummoxed. Like who, who are these people and why did they do this to him? And who do they think they are? And I, I just, I've been so prosecution heavy since serving on the grand jury. Um, but I've been to a couple of trials and I've seen um, some good defenses. The state has made mistakes before. So I, I try to go into it with an open mind. Uh, most notably the last Travis Rudolph, the football player in Palm Beach County was wrongly arrested and sat in jail for two years for a, a very sloppy investigation. Um, and so I was really rooting for the defense on that and he was exonerated and that was great. So you have to have an open mind because, you know, police do make mistakes, but there was no mistake in this. This was planned. This didn't have to happen. And this was no accident. Yeah. You know, we heard the tapes from Charlie after, after he was convicted saying that this was some kind of fourth grade, uh, brought down to a fourth grade level and, kind of blaming it on Wendy, I thought. Uh, what did you make of those tapes? I'll start with you, Patty. I can't get enough of them. I mean, it shouldn't be entertainment, but I listen to them all the time to see if I can find anything that would make... It just doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not a murderer. So I try to like just figure it out. Like, how did this happen? And who was the architect? That's been a lot of my thinking. Is, was the architect Donna? Was the architect Wendy? Was the architect Charlie? Yeah. And, and I mean, he, you know, he seemed to think that if he had a, a story for everything, you know, in his conversations, even the La Belle, La Dolce Vita, Belle, Dolce Vita tapes, like if you have a story for everything, they can't say anything. So he, came to trial. Were you prepared for that, Sonny? Well, um, I have an idea of the kind of family dynamic I think that Charlie thought he was in or is in, you know, as far as, you know, I think as the middle child, he wasn't expected much because his older brother was a doctor, so he couldn't outdo that. Um, and his younger sister is the baby and you know all eyes on her and he was just kind of in the middle he I think he was trying to please his mother all the time I think he was trying to find his own way um, he became a dentist just because he didn't have the aspiration or uh, skills to become a doctor I don't think he had the you know what it takes um, so he did the minimum uh, he cheated his way through dental school and I think that he went on both sides of the tracks because that way he could hang out with his uh, gym rat steroids and be like the big man in the little town. And then he can go um, nightclubbing with a pretty young girl on his arm and be a, you know, a big fish there on Miami beach. And I think that he had a role he was playing. He thinks, and he played it till the end. And I don't think this is the end he had in mind. He, he might've been in some kind of Miami Vice episode or something, but he really, he took a wrong turn. And mm -hmm. that's, that's it. And, you know, Wendy, as far as Wendy, I mean, I've gone to school with girls like Wendy. You are the, the youngest, you are the only girl. You are expected to, <clears throat> you know, remain, um, true and, and virginal and, and, and go to school and don't worry about boys and don't worry about this and, you know, get all the good grades and, and, and then you marry a nice, nice Jewish boy and you have babies and, and that's what you do. And I think that she got all of what her mother wanted her to do. But at some point she's like, what about me? 
I mean, it's like a midlife crisis, but she had it earlier because she had her kids so early and she was just in school for so long. You know, I, I just think that she broke loose and Charlie's been living loose his whole life. So good point. So, so I'm hearing some complaints about the noise. Is is that you, Sonny, in the background? Are you in a are you outside? I'm or? on my pat. Look, yeah. Let me go inside and see. My oh, husband okay. took a phone call. Let me try that. OK. OK. okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, um, how's that? Thank, I, I hope that's better for everybody. Is that better, oh, everybody? Okay. It's better for me. I hear okay. less noise. So uh, Thank sometimes, you. you know, life happens when you do these live streams. So um, what what was the experience like of, of watching of watching Charlie testify? How was the jury taking it? Um, Patty, I'll start with you. Were you in court for that? I was in court for it. I had to change my whole life around to be in court that day. I was like, I can't be on the radio. I can't be anywhere. I have to be right there. And then the courtroom was packed in the beginning. And then towards the end, it wasn't because the boredom was just taking over. And I think unless you were a true, true crime watcher, the boredom would have taken over. It was tough. It was tough to listen to when he said, when he... When he recalled the page and number of the call, like the call number 183, I was like, you're out, buddy. You've just lost the entire jury. And he didn't even watch it. He didn't even That's notice what... the jury. He didn't even look at the jury. There was only one person who looked at the jury, well, two, who looked at the jury and addressed the jury when they were testifying. And it was Corbett, the one, the officer who gave all the phone calls which I thought mm -hmm. he was brilliant. He was brilliant the first time he was on. And Webster, Stephen Webster. But he, Charlie didn't speak to the jury. He spoke to Rashbaum and he challenged Kappelman. And that was his job for the day. And he lost. And I was happy. So was the experience very much like listening to the calls uh, where he's just talking at nauseam and you're just like, please make it stop? No, it wasn't because it was tough to hear in the classroom, in the classroom, in the courtroom. So you really had to focus on what was being said. You couldn't play it back. You couldn't. There were people that had an iPad and they were trying to listen. That will end for the next trial. They won't allow that anymore. Um, but it was it was tough to hear. And then just the disbelief. I mean, I just and then not be able to make a face. So there was a lot of those things that you. We were instructed we couldn't do. You had to be very careful about your reaction. So it was nothing like listening at home. Nothing. And I think that was Judge Everett. I've been in the courtroom with Hankinson, the previous judge, and it was a very different experience from How's Judge so? Everett. Well, uh, Hankinson allowed questions from the uh, jury. And he was just a little bit, he's called Hangham Hankinson. But he was still more relaxed in the courtroom. He didn't keep a Marine style environment where Judge Everett was like, this is it. You're done. You're out. Even Mrs. Markell. So that's so different. interesting. I'm sorry. That's so interesting that you said that's when he lost it because I'm watching at home and I go, oh, he just lost this case for sure. I had no doubts after he called up the evidence that he's just telling the jury that he memorized the evidence and he tailored his story to the evidence. You know, he thinks he's winning. He's, <laughs> he's losing up there. Say, so, you know, if you want to date me, you know, if you want to quote me, date me and all that stuff, really arrogant. Sonny, what was your experience um, watching Charlie testify? Well, it was uh, quite long, monotonous, uh, boring, and, there was a time when we did have a break and we got out and walked around and a well, Susan from true lifestyles. Hi, Susan. <clears throat> she said, um, we just can't, we can't take this anymore. I think there was her and Katie cool lady and some others. I'm not sure who all, and they just were like, we can't take this. It's, it's so much garbage. It's such an insult. Um, we, we just can't take it. Uh, but my daughter and I decided to stay and it really was hard to hear. Um, it, uh, so we, since a lot of people left, we moved up a couple of the 
pews. I'm going to call them pews because they're like church pews. And uh, it was hard to hear. He was very soft spoken. And it was just like a like a, a rehearsal, like you're rehearsing a stage play with the stage hand or the camera guy. He's reading this and you're answering. It was, I mean, I've even seen high school plays that were more convincing. I'm just saying. Yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was insulting. Uh, and I, I believe the Markells stayed there or, or did they go in? They might, sometimes they go into the victim's room and, and, and sit there, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they stayed. Um, because they're troopers. I, remember I mean, this is the first time they were hearing his, from him. She did walk out at one point, I believe. And was everybody waiting for cross examination? And and what? And how did you? And how did you feel he did during cross? I don't think he did oh, well exactly. at all. Mm -hmm. Am I okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I don't think he did well at all. I think that he and his lawyer underestimated Georgia, which is, you know, to their, to their detriment and their jury consultant should have looked up. I mean, Georgia, I'm going to have to get her this shirt I saw on Amazon. Um, I do mock court for sport <laughs> because Georgia runs mock court up there at FSU and teaches lawyers and they didn't do any investigation into what kind of prosecutor she was. They just, I mean, she's so sweet. She knocked them over with her, her sweetness. They weren't, you know, she's, she's the kind of lady like do no harm, but take no poop. You know what I'm saying? And they, I think they severely underestimated her. And I think that they both think that they're smarter than they are. And that, we, the public and the jury, uh, are, are like swooned by them. Like uh, you're nothing to us. You're, you're no, you're nobody special, but I think that they thought they were, and they thought they were going to just like Wendy thought they were going to come in and mesmerize us with their, I think mm -hmm. the jury was turned off by Charlie when they started hearing, um, the money in the bank and in the safe, and I'm going to move this into your pile. And they were hearing the wiretaps about, and you could see that even the highest paid person on there couldn't relate to something like that. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, it, it just, he, I think Josh Dubin did, did a terrible job picking a jury. And I, I think that uh, Donna's lawyer is going to do better because he's of that town. Right, Patty? Yeah. The co-counsel, Alex Morris. Yes. Yes. Alex what, Morris. What do you know about Alex, Alex Morris, Morris Patty? Pardon me? What do you know about Alex Morris, Patty? I've been analyzing him. I've been watching whatever videos I can find and reading. Transcripts. See? And I do believe that his favorite word is confused. So he'll like, try to <laughs> puzzled portray. and confused. It, it's very confusing. The Hoyt Birch case, which was a horrific case, it's a horrific murder here. He was representing one of the defense, defendants. I think there were four at the same time. And everything was confusing, confusing. The one thing I do like about him is he does try to get them to plead. <laughs> He's Several of the cases I've followed of his was they to plead to something. But a plea has to be offered, correct? Right. Well, no, you could offer. No... Oh, okay. Do you yeah, think you that they'll say, do? Hey, we want to come to the table, but Roberta, do you think Do Donna would? No. Volunteer all... something like that? No, they're gonna all go to their grave. This is the way I see it. Uh, they're all so narcissistic. I think it's a family of antisocial personalities, and I think that they she will go to her grave saying she didn't do it. She was falsely accused. Cry me a river. The fact that Dubin, and now, uh, you know, spoiler alert to my video for <laughs> tomorrow, but Dubin went on Joe Rogan, presented this guy who just got out a year ago. He said he's guilty, which is, you never hear from that side. I, I, you could have knocked me over with a feather on Joe Rogan, say he was guilty. Had a huge rap sheet. He was a miracle. He was wonderful. And he just killed and dismembered a body. So, it's, um, you know, that's what you get for a million dollars. You know, it's a lot. I mean, I just, I find it very interesting that the Adelsons uh, 
constantly hire people of questionable, of people I consider of questionable morals, from Dubin to Rashbaum. And I believe they're people that flatter them and that people that buy into their cult talking, you know, this is a, we're wrongly accused or wrongly convicted. This is a horror show. The justice system is so terrible to you, the Adelson family. But what, uh, Patty, you've done some really interesting research into the Adelson's mm -hmm. properties. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I, when I thought about having a show, I thought, well, how can I do it a little differently? Because so many people had a podcast and I'm a real estate broker and a property appraiser and I'm really good at real estate real research. So I thought, let me just see how much they, what, what is their real wealth? And to me, real wealth is in property. Like when you have a lot of money, it's usually you put, you invest it into property, not just the stock market. So I found out they didn't have a lot. And then I was like, well, he has a second home, which you don't really hear about. I only heard about Whale Harbor. So I looked at the second home quite closely, quite closely, in fact, and found out that Charlie said he'd, a statement he made on the stand, he'd lived there since 2006. I don't know what that noise is. It's not me. Sorry. No, hey, Sonny, can you mute your, your mic? Or I got I it. I did it. Okay. So since 2006, and I thought, that's not true because the property record card said it was sold in 2014. So then I had to research him. And that's what I do. Whenever someone says something, I just don't, it doesn't hit right. I just start researching the hell out of you. And I did. And I found out that it was a short sale. So Charlie stopped paying his mortgage shortly after he bought the property. And Excuse it was about to me, go into Patty. foreclosure. Hmm? Excuse me, Patty. I'm sorry. I don't know what a short sale means. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to explain that. So Charlie stopped paying the mortgage shortly after he bought the property. What a short sale is, it's not short as far as time. It's the bank is going to be short. So the bank, with, your, with the permission of the bank, you're able to sell the home for less money, but there's some stipulations. Uh, sometimes the difference, it's like if you had a charge off on your credit card, the difference, you might get a 1099 for the difference of what it sells for and what you owed. And you can't sell it to family or friends. There's an arm's length affidavit that you must sign. Arm's length means you, you don't know the people who are buying it. Well, that's not what happened here. So what happened was I had to look up who owned it. And it was an LLC, but the LLC started, it was actually in the home address of Tortugas and, or Whale Harbor. So it was like, sometimes investors will buy something and they'll put, um, like I'm doing one right now, 1904 LLC, whatever that is, the house number, the street LLC. So they have banking and checking and it's all in order. It made it easy for me to search. So who would, oh, who was this person that bought it? and had the LLC before the home was even listed as a foreclosure or even listed at all. And then of course there was a young man about 21 years old. I was like, well, who owns his house? Because he's a tenant. So how do you pay 300 some odd thousand dollars in cash when you're a tenant in a tiny little one, one in Broward? So I was like, okay. So he, that place was owned by Franklin, something franklin assets llc who owns franklin assets llc a guy who resells dental equipment great so a guy who resells dental equipment who happens to know harvey later on they didn't do the paperwork right and harvey becomes the owner supposedly of this paperwork but not really doing the corporate docs right and i turned it over to the fbi and of course, they probably won't do anything. However, I felt like I did my due diligence and sent it over to them. That's so the story of the short what, sale. What would be the purpose of doing that? Uh, is just hiding money or getting, uh, what's the purpose of doing something like that? Moving money around that way, hiding, hiding your assets? Well, Charlie wasn't paying the mortgage. So he was probably out. They probably sat together like they do everything else. And hey, hey let's try this. And it worked. Interesting. So, so if he can't pay the mortgage at that rate, then dad comes in a lot less and pays cash for it through a straw buyer.
because that's what that's called is a straw buyer. They're not real. And in fact, one of the partners of this straw buyer of the kid who was living in the rental owned by the guy who resells dental equipment became Charlie's realtor later on and knows June. Wow. So it's so all speak- so convoluted and criminal and disgusting, but they, I, I don't know why they haven't gone after them for financial crimes. It's a heck of a lot easier than what they've done. Sure is. You have the paper, you know, you have a paper trail and mm-hmm. you don't have to rely on anyone's word. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about how this, how the Adelsons, what was, okay. So I have two questions. Okay. How they all decided that this was the best. Hold on. I have to cough. How they decided that this was the best plan with Dan Markell and what was the, I mean, I think we, maybe we might all agree that the, that telling Donna, she can't, visit the children, the visit the grandchildren without supervision or asking the courts to have supervised visits only with Donna and threatening Wendy's law license might've been the tip off. But do you agree that those two things were the tip off? And what do you think that meeting was like of the Adelson family where they all decided that this was the best plan? You know, I always joke about it. Like, you know, in my Donna voice, like the murder, they all decide that murder is the, is the best is the best plan. How does a family decide that the grandchildren can be permanently damaged? Maybe they don't see it that way. Maybe I'm sure being so narcissistic, they don't think about it. But I mean, even at a very selfish minimum, that they might all go to prison for this. How do you think this? How do you? How does this? I mean, I'm just going a little bit away from facts and a little bit. Uh, into fantasy. How do you imagine it it happened? And what do you think the tip off was? Um, I'm going to speak first because I think that it was a compendium or a, like a, a snowball effect. I think it was, it was, wow. If he, you know, if Dan just had an accident, oh, well then you know, not just an accident, you know, because who's going to want to take care of somebody, you know, we, we need him gone or something. And then, you know, then when then Charlie will start ringing in with, well, you know, you'll get social security and all this, you know, so you won't even have, you know, and, and you'll get the survivor benefits and all this. And I think that they told Harvey that, um, if, uh, we're going to, we're going to, as your birthday present, we're going to give the kids your last name, you know, uh, either that was, I, I think all of these things, everybody had uh, a, a hand in it. I think there was something in it for everybody. Uh, Donna got to be with the kids. Uh, Wendy got to be free and in Miami and have money. Um, Harvey got to have the boys with his last name and didn't have to see his daughter uh, so miserable and drive 700 miles uh, every weekend, which was utterly ridiculous. And, uh, Charlie got to be like the big hero. And I think that it was one thing on top of another and they all had their reason for it. And in their own mind, they never considered the boys one moment other than what's in it for me. Donna, I get the boys. Wendy, I don't have to share the boys with my mom and Dan, but she's not interested in the boys. You listen to those phone calls. Well, Wendy's got a party and then she's got a brunch and then maybe you can stop in and see her because I'll have the boys and, you know, Wendy is living her best life after this. This was, so I think they all had like, they all had five on it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Remember that song? I I think there was something in it, something in it for every one of them. And it was just, it was a group think and it was a group decision and it was a group payment. And it was a group insulation. Yeah. Before I before I move on to you, Patty, uh, Dr. Z, thank you so much for the super sticker. Or DZ, sorry. I have Dr. Zap on the mind. DZ, thank you for the super sticker. Jamie Hayes, member for one month. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Slice of banana bread for you. And Miss Shorty, 10. Count them, 10 memberships and my understanding is they they get 
Anyone's in the chat, uh, they get distributed at random. Give to 10 memberships. Very generous of you, Miss Shorty. Check out her channel. She is pumping out sh great shorts on, on this case and more. Uh, Patty. This is great. We need that. We need all of these people talking about it because it was hidden for too long with the, within the politics of the, you know, Patty will speak to that more because I wasn't even aware of all that. Yeah, state you know, we were at Willie Meggs. Yep. Can you talk a little bit people, about that and, and how you imagine the Adelson family got together? I'll do that and that part first. And I think Wendy is a feeder. I think she fed into Donna's most, I can't say the word on YouTube, but weaknesses. Uh, I think constantly down grading and making herself feel better about Dan and then just constantly insulting Dan to Donna played into it. I think, I think Wendy's the architect, whether she knew it in the beginning or not, I think Donna in a lot of ways, and I only get this perspective from a, another attorney here in town who is a defense attorney. And she said, but Donna's perspective is I was protecting my daughter. I was protecting my family. I was like, that's fair. It doesn't make her any less wicked. Just that's fair. But I think Wendy is the architect in my head and she just played it out. You can see how she sits on the stand and tries to tilt her head to enamor people. And then when she doesn't get her response, this, the glare that they get after the fact, she just had that family wrapped. I don't think she talked to Charlie as much as she pretended to with detective Isom. I don't think she talked to him as much at all. He didn't know she really went down that road on Trescott until that court. And he said so in his calls afterwards. He didn't know she did it. It's unreal that she did it. Let's just take a quick look, uh, starting with Luis Rivera and the blog is Wendy or the blonde is Wendy. <laughs> uh, just a little, just a little, we'll just watch a, just a short clip of Wendy of Rivera and then Wendy's cross for just a little, just a second. How did you find out that the victim was leaving town the following day? Uh, I can't remember that good. Was it from a blog? Objection, Your Honor. It's not leading, Your Honor. Was it from a blog? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what blog was that? The blog was Wendy. No. Do you want yes. the culpable parties held accountable for murdering the father of your children? Absolutely. I'm grateful they're already in jail. But not if it's your family. It's not my family. I mean, somebody hired them, right? Not necessarily. Somebody paid them. I learned something this morning. <laughs> yeah, me too. You didn't want them held accountable if it was your family members. Didn't you tell law enforcement that? That's not what I told law enforcement. What did you tell law enforcement? I told them that the person who did this should be held responsible and that I had nothing to do with it. Page 122, lines 7 through 12. If somebody tried to kill my ex-husband, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. The investigator says, regardless of who it is, and your answer is, I mean, it would be different if I thought it were my brother. But I don't think it was my family. That's what different I now, isn't it? No, it's not different. That's exactly it's different what today, I said isn't right it? here. No, that's not no. right. <laughs> oh, classic. Patty. Yes, sir. Oh, oh my gosh. She just can't help herself. And that's what Charlie said. She could not help herself. And I had no idea until those calls, which are so delicious to listen to, that she, he didn't know she drove down the road. So to me, the hierarchy was Wendy, Donna, and then Charlie was the, do the doer. Charlie, I believe, adored his mother, his middle child, and just did whatever she wanted because he couldn't say no. And now look at him. A mess, but Willie Meggs, Willie Meggs was our state attorney before Jack Campbell, and Willie Meggs was beloved here. I don't get it. I'm not from here. I'm a carpet bagger, and he didn't do anything. And he had Magbanoa and Siegfried arrested, you know, towards the end, 
But he didn't want to do anything. He didn't want to do anything with the Adelsons. And come to find out later, there was a lot of politics involved as to why. I don't know how he lives with himself. He's still alive, by the way. Let me ask you this, Patty. How did the law school and all of that, like, approach Willie Meggs? I mean, you're not just because they're, they're physically adjacent, the buildings, but, I mean, it's our law professor, and this guy is not looking for the killer? Did, how did they feel? Did they were scared? You know what they like, what's going on? They brokered a, a new law for the Markells. They did other things because they couldn't control Willie. They did other things. One thing to learn in Florida is don't murder an attorney. Don't do it. And definitely don't murder a Jewish attorney because the the group and the conclave that came around the Markels is just absolutely amazing. They got a new statute because of this and law. That's anti-Willie Meggs altogether. I can't believe they didn't like storm storm his office. You know, even some of like if Georgia, you know, what went to FSU? Like, why aren't you looking for the killer of my you know, colleague or something. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine how it felt there. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so we just brought up Wendy. I mean, this is always the topic of discussion when we talk about this case. Is Wendy going to be arrested ever in this case? And if so, when? And why? Is it all Megs? Is that the reason that this is dragged out so long? Yes. Yes, he said in, in reports in the Democrat and anywhere else you want to look, he did not see enough evidence. And not until they got the audio enhanced with Charlie and Catherine McBanawa did they, did they go forward. And that was a big deal. Which, by the way, didn't his, um, his investigator like pull a favor or know somebody who in the FBI and they had to get this funded to get this enhanced because he wasn't going to pay for it or something. That's probably accurate. Knowing okay. I've lived here 23 years. So I believe it. Um, my thought on Wendy is I think that if she is free, she can test, she can still be compelled to testify at Donna's trial. If she's, in jail, she'll just plead the fifth and she won't be a witness at all. Like, right? I mean, I have to ask a lawyer, but I think they're going to, if they arrest her now that they have all this forensic going back to two years before the murder, which is, you know, immense. Uh, I think that when, if they uncover something like that, they'll arrest her. But after Donna's trial, like maybe the day or day couple, like they did with Charlie, what, a day after Katie's? Conviction, they arrested Charlie. Right, right. I think, I mean, I think they got to give Wendy the sense that she can testify under immunity and it's all going to stop with Donna, which it may. You know, we all may walk away from this case pretty dis a little disappointed. That may happen, but it certainly will be a weird OJ like existence for Wendy to walk around as she does now with this being a, a public figure for this, not for, not for her work with uh, trafficking, not for uh, human trafficking, not for anything else for this, for this case, it'll be, it'll she be, might, it'll be. She might as well wear a scarlet red, scarlet letter A for Adelson. Uh, those boys aren't long till uh, age of maturity. And then what, are they going to, what is you guys' take on, are they going to like spring forward and get out or are they going to have like guardians? Because Donna that surrounds her pe herself with yes people, that's who was on her phone. Anybody that's going to tell her what she wants to hear, they all do. They surround themselves with yes people. So what do you think is going to happen? Maybe within the boys are going to come of age right when Donna is convicted and then Wendy might be arrested. Like, do you think it's all going to time out like that? I don't know. I don't know. It's certainly, uh, what do you got? I, I think that, uh, I, I think that those boys are very smart. And if they have Wendy 
and Dan Markell's DNA. They're got to be very smart. And it's a very interesting psychological thing to consider how, how you break away from your family. It reminds me a lot of the Robert Marshall case with where his boys watched the trial and of, of his killing by contract, Maria Marshall, his wife, and they walked away, you know, except the youngest one, all but the youngest one. So there may be one kid could go, you know, they're not, we call, call them the boys, but they're not one unit. You know, one may walk away from the family. One may stay loyal to uh, Charlie. My understanding is one is closer to Charlie than the other. And what a horrible thing when that's your only family um, that you and, know. And if they're, and hopefully they if they're going integrated. to Temple, and if they're going to Temple, I mean, everybody in that Temple is going to believe the Adelsons. I, I, I find that hard to believe. Maybe someone is advising them, you know, on the side or, or keeping an eye out for when they're maturity and say, you know, two more years and, you know, you'll be able to be free or something like a confidant in the temple. I don't know. I'm hoping they have an advocate out there that's not in Adelson and that's not financially interested. Right. So what do you think, Patty? I mean, what are your thoughts? I think whatever situation they've lived in since they were just tots, it's baked in. And we don't know what they were taught to believe about the Markells. I hope it's not what I think it is. I pray for the whole situation daily. There's another case here locally, and it was the Mike Williams case. And it was found that the mother and the stepfather were responsible and the daughter is now an adult and she has nothing to do with the husband's family at all. I, I, you just don't know until they're grown and one can decide. I mean, think about it like Prince Harry and Prince William. You didn't, and no one believed what would happen happened. And here, where we are. You know? I well, I believe the anything royalty. with the, the royalties. Well, I think that, um, well, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. What do you think, Roberta? Well, I have a question for Patty about Donna in, in, well, now she's in jail. What do you know about the Leon County Jail? And and what do you know about how she's doing in jail? And how do you think, should she be convicted? Uh, will she, I'm worried she will end it all, basically, uh, because of just her her personality is such a need. She has such a need to control. Well, well I worked with doing the, it. I worked is, at the jail. I worked at Leon County jail when I first moved here. I'm a nurse or originally and still a nurse, but I don't work at the jail, but I enjoyed working at the jail for very reasons. It, it was, I worked at night and it obviously was a very regimented. I'm regimented. And Donna, the jail is very clean. It's very tidy. It's well run. They have a lot of freedoms they have now that they didn't have when I worked there. They have those tablets where they can make the calls and canteen. And now that she's in general, she can pretty much do what she wants during the day as long as she stays, you know, within her within the rules that are set by the sheriff. Um. As far as whether I believe she will undo herself in the future, I thought that in the beginning. I thought that with the first hearing when I saw her come in and she was oddly facially weird. You know, she was making those weird stretchy neck things. She was so shocked, right? She was just so super shocked. The last time what I saw was defiance in her face. And I thought, oh, she's not going anywhere soon. She has defiance. When she spoke to the judge, she was awake. She was aware. She looked like she had energy and she was defiant. We could hear, I don't know if you were there, Sonny. The first hearing that she had, Rashbaum was in the pews, as Sonny said. And they were talking about a trial in July or so. And he muttered in the back saying she won't live that long. And now you see her, she's defiant. She's she's what? nowhere the way by she won't live that long. That's what he so said. He's right in front of, I was right in front of him. 
Wow. Yeah. And I think she's not the waif we all thought she was when she walked in. I thought she's going to lose weight. She's going to harm herself. She's never putting herself through this. And then when I saw her face on that screen with Everett in the last, I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, she's, I've been saying since the beginning, she's a cockroach. She's I, you know, I know Carl Steinbeck was saying, oh, she's not going to make it. She's not going to survive it just because of her. And that's a fair prediction because of her pampered lifestyle. But I saw that steely. That's I mean, come on. I mean, that steely side of her. I mean, she got on that phone with that undercover and she told them how it was. I don't know what you know. I don't know what he would. She's go, a tough go woman. tell you right. She's yeah, she's a tough right. And uh, what do you predict for her trial? What's going to be your defense? I'll start with you, Sunny. Mm. She uh, she is tough. She does. They go to work out every day for an hour. Okay. I mean, I I I. I, I I try to go to the gym with my daughter for an hour. I, I'm 10 minutes in. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go sit down and watch YouTube now because I'm exhausted. Okay. So an hour at the gym and they, they play tennis. I mean, she is, she's very fit. She's very toned. I don't know about the narcissistic people um, who would chew aside. You know, I don't know how that statistic works um, because I think that she is going to put on like she's a frail old lady. And maybe, uh, maybe the jury will buy it. I don't think so. Uh, you're, the jury's pretty smart, but she, she, we don't look at old people like that anymore. She, you know, we, she's, she plays tennis. She's well read. She, it works out. She's not going to just let herself go to heck after a living a life of, you know, Botox and lips, like whatever she can hang on to, she's going to hang on to. She, she can't get any more injections and makeup, but she can hang on to her figure. She's very weight conscious. She's yeah. She's very all about, about, yeah. All about her. Yeah. yeah. Didn't she try was, to go to Weight Watchers? <laughs> yeah, they brag. That's she just what, wanted to brag. That's what Wendy says. I mean, you just never know. Everybody's so uh, such an unreliable narrator in that family. Who knows what is what? They've made so but many uh, mythologies about her father's cancer and it's not really, it wasn't really the way she put it out. That's serious. And that podcast, what do you, I mean, have you guys listened to her podcast? It's, I have a episode on it on my Patreon, but it's, it's, it's madness. It's tough. I, I can't, I can't tolerate it. Um, I don't drink anymore. So sobriety and her, I just, I, I, I don't want to have to start drinking again. I know. I don't appreciate her voice. I don't, I, I watched her on the stand and, you know, at the trial, we were there since I was there since um, day one jury selection. And after they rooted through all the people and then the, they sat the jury and they said, these are the charges. I was waiting for like Charlie to react or something or the people at the jury, like I was going the back and forth. Um, and like, I give the jury credit, man. They were quite stone faced and very astute. But when Georgia was talking about Wendy's book to, I, I don't know, she was talking about her book and she lost Wendy lost the jury when they started talking about, because they knew the Hiawassee thing springs. They knew everything she was talking about. She insulted those people, their lifestyle, where they live, who they love. I don't think that the jury liked Wendy at all. She doesn't come across as likable, believable. Once or twice on a sidebar, she looked over at the jury and tried to like, connect and she couldn't and she looked down and then picked up her water bottle and drank it and i mean i swear her nose is getting bigger and her ears are getting bigger she's she's uh, she's not she didn't seem genuine or likable like the people on the jury we saw them at lunch we saw them on the patio we saw them sitting outside you know hi how are you they're just everyday people mm -hmm. there there's a, a disconnect so i, I want to know don is going to play as a somebody's grandma but when they hear those tapes it's all over so she should play to her strength because it's an insult to people's intelligence yeah i'm just wondering if she's going to put on some act like 
grow out our hair gray and and but now I'm talking to you lovely ladies I'm thinking no she's too narcissistic to play up her age but they will play up that she's a grandmother and a former I mean when, when have we seen a trial with a grandmother on trial former kindergarten teacher I've been holding on to this forever this is really interesting because of when it was written about Wendy's book. Here's a little review from Amazon. The stories of the women trafficked in this book are good enough, but I completely skimmed through the book. So this was written July 29th, 2013. uh, Mm -hmm. Before uh, Dan Markell's murder, but I completely skimmed through the boring narrative of the authors whose inflated narcissistic entries about her life and self-importance. I was interested in her personal life and issues with her husband. I was not interested in her personal issues and life whatsoever and husband whatsoever. Additionally, we come to find that the stories are actually made up. The characters, a quote unquote combination of victims, the author says she has helped. So it sounds like she, this commenter, uh, please pass the book does not believe Wendy. So none of these stories are actually real, but mixtures of the experiences of several victims. While I applaud anyone who pers- who who champions the plight of trafficking victims to me, this book just felt like an attempt by an author to inflate her own egocentricities. The book should be a dollar ninety nine. Well, I think she got her wish. I think is it out? Is it out of print no. or is it still no? Print? No, you can get it. It's very expensive. I just ordered it from the library and had to wait like two months. Mm-mm. It's hard Let, to get. Yep. Yeah, I think the ebook. Yeah, that's right. I, I think I have the ebook and I have not gotten a, a, around to it. If I'm remembering correctly, um, <laughs> so what do you think the strategy is? Are we going to see another kind of Charlie Light extortion defense or or, or what and I hope for Rash Bomb's uh, wallet in his, license it isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope for Rash Bomb's wall license it isn't. I can't imagine what's gonna happen. I have no idea. After last time, no. do you, Sonny? I have no clue what he's gonna do. Um, I don't know where he's gonna go. I think he's gonna stick with the uh Charlie got extorted, so she thought she was getting extorted. You could hear her arguing on the phone. I mean, to her credit, she's the only one that called the bump people back. At first, you know, that they made, I didn't know they made four bumps, but she finally, you you know. Oh, yeah, they had like a text. They texted her at home at like two in the morning, totally rattled her. Um, They called her office. They sent a letter to her condo so that they, she knew they knew that she knew where she, they, she was. We know where you live. We know where you work. We know your phone number. And we walked by you and gave you this letter handheld. So there was like four months. She's, she called back finally and was like, I don't know anything about it. And I asked all my friends and all that, you know. So she's, she, she's the only one that had the, you know, the nerve to, to call them back and, and talk to them because all the rest of them were passing the buck. And as far as, oh, sorry, go ahead. I do think we're forgetting that Alex Morris is going to be co-counsel and he's a much more serious criminal defense attorney than Rashbaum is. So I do think but he's, he's confusing. Is that what you said? His favorite he's, words his, seem to be confusing. Cause I'll do word searches when I bring up a transcript and try to figure out what's the most popular word. It's a game and confusing is his favorite word, but and he then, still has, he still is a more serious person. He's not going to come up with some convoluted theory like that. I don't believe it. Not, well, not between um, between the puzzle and the confusing, it's like uh, a new band, you know, dazed and confused. Now we're uh, puzzled and confused. It's like, uh, let, let's just minimize this, maximize that and try and get one over on the jury again. Or, I mean, because George has got facts, they got tapes. And I want to know how long it'll be till they get any of this um, cell bright and information back. And also, I have a question for the both of you. Do you think at Donna's trial, Ruth or Phil will be able to get up as a witness and speak to how she treated them or something? Because I hope so. They didn't have really much to do with Charlie, but 
you know, they they did the, the, the you know, Don and Harvey. Do you think that Ruth will get on the stand and, and talk about how awful she was or? Well, like, would I, Ruth be a witness it, for the state? Well, can can they make it? Can I don't a a witness, but how is that connected to Donna at, there in Canada when all this is happening? I think a good defense attorney will say that's not relevant. Well, well they came they were treated no during the memorial, memorial service. service. Yeah, yeah the, memorial service, they the they memorial service. They took them. They they wouldn't allow visits. They um they came down twice a year, you know, and the kids had spring break and everything, and the the Jewish holidays and how they kept them from the religion and even after their you know, son died, how they alienated them. And, you know, like it all goes to motive as far as George is mm -hmm. concerned. She keeps saying, what was your mother's biggest thing? Relocation. Right. Remember, that location, that location, moved. location. Right. I'm that sorry. Weekend that weekend they moved and Donna and Harvey were up here to help them move. And it wasn't just let's pack our vehicle. So Don and Harvey knew, and they were prepared and had a moving truck. Guaranteed. Because Patty said in the summer, everybody's off. It's a college town, teachers, and you know, the mover. And it's the hottest time of year. Like, you're crazy in Florida to move in the summer. But um, there's you have to call ahead to get a Sunday mover, especially back then. It wasn't just go rent a truck. You know, they weren't renting a U-Haul themselves. Interesting. So they got a mover. So you say... So am I understanding right, and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'll get to get these super chats in a second, um, that you're saying that those move, that they had to know in advance to hire those movers. Absolutely. And that's right. That, that it could not be done get a moving truck minute. on a Sunday here. You can't get a move. You, let's put it this way. You can't get a moving truck on a Sunday here. Unless you're that's driving your own U-Haul. You can't. I hope. I hope George is listening if she hasn't thought of some of these avenues to go down. Jane's World, Pretty Lies ex exhibited a form that Donna Donna filled out <laughs> asking to be on a wait li list for sewing classes. Is that in, Jane, is that in uh, Leon County? Because yeah. Leon yes. County is incredible with the things that they offer that I've seen on the website, at least. I don't know if they offer all those things, but certainly they... they have in the past beekeeping i mean come on sherry davis uh thanks roberta for having patty and sunny on two great guests thank you sherry my pleasure and karen last one karen coat uh thank you i appreciate it anyone never i've charlie adelson's only goal with Katie was to connect with Sigfredo Garcia to make the hit happen. No yep. coincidence in here is dating her. Oh, okay. So yep. you're asking, do we think it's, uh, or you're, you're making a statement. Katie believed uh, uh, otherwise. Interesting. Sure did. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he groomed was... June. He groomed June to get her real estate license because he wanted to use her. She wasn't going to, she wanted to get married and have kids. She's an old fashioned you know, her parents owned a restaurant. She worked probably when she was little and just wanted to get married and, and be a wife. And Charlie made her get her real estate license, encouraged her, um, because I think he wanted to use her for some of his real estate dealings and keep all the money in together, you know, but let's keep it all in the family type of deal. And I think he groomed Katie and uh, because, you know, he likes to do that To He groomed her with money and promises of, a relationship or things that she wasn't getting from her high school boyfriend who she had two kids with and, you know, never went out or did anything. So Charlie offered her the world uh, and he played both of them against each other. And I think that Katie Sigfredo did it to get Katie back in his life. And Katie did it to uh, keep Charlie in her life. Um, I'm going to just take a short uh, little in intermission with a blast from the past from Murder for Murder by Maestro's channel. Let's take a look. What I enjoy most about our practice is restoring a person's smile that often changes their personality 
and gives them a more positive outlook on life. Our practice uses the most modern dental technology, from rotary endodontics, computer-generated ceramic restorations, digital radiographs, intraoral photography, and of course, we use nitrous oxide and oral sedation for the highest level of patient comfort and relaxation. My name is Dr. Charlie Adelson, and I am a periodontist, owner, and co-partner with my father, Dr. Harvey Adelson, who's a cosmetic dentist. What I love about what I do is being able to restore people's smiles and change the way they chew, change the way they live, and change their self-esteem and how they think about themselves on a daily basis. When a patient comes to my office, they're being treated like family. And it's also being a team approach where the hygienist, the cosmetic dentist, and the periodontist are all working together to give them the optimal result. My name is Jennifer Cacciola. I've been coming here for about 10 years. My experiences have been very positive. The staff is very professional. I came here 10 years ago to get my veneers put on and I've been absolutely thrilled with the results. And I can't say how wonderful and professional um, the staff has just been. They've been really, really caring and just amazing. I would definitely recommend this place to others. I have actually recommended for people to come here. My husband has come here as well. My name is Clint Stevenson. I've been coming to Dr. Adelson's office for about five and a half years now. They've been phenomenal. I'm never a big fan of the dentist, but ever since I got introduced to this office, great staff, very friendly, and uh, I always feel like I'm taken care of well. Very professional. Every time I come here, I feel like I get the full most uh, from their attention from the staff and Dr. Adelson is himself as well. So it's a great experience every time I come. I look forward to it as well. I highly recommend them. <laughs> Have you seen that before, Patty? I've not seen it. I have not seen it. But that how Charlie spoke, those so kind of stilted, not naturally, was how he spoke on the stand. It was unnatural. Crazy. Crazy. That was weird. Wasn't that funny? Did you see it? I have an echo. Oh, okay. There's two of you. So I'm gonna boot one, okay, Sonny? I don't know oh, why yeah. I have two of you, so I'm gonna boot I'm gonna boot one of you from the studio. Uh, sorry, <laughs> so I don't Thank know. How to... okay. It's okay. I, I touched something. I touched uh, something. Okay. Am I there? Uh, yeah. What do you think that he loves the? He, he wants to help people chew. And now, in how do you think he will do? So being a a a, a nurse and in, in jail, it's not prison. But how do you think he's going to do it in uh, prison? And uh, Patty, what? Uh, and Sunny, what? Uh, how do you think he's going to do? I know I understand that he's in the special, special place for people that are yeah, uh, management. It's called protective right. management here. Thank you. I don't think he's going to do well. I don't think he looks well. I think the mugshot that was taken when he first went into a color correctional, he looked absolutely petrified. And I and where he is now, Columbia, is far worse than what Kala was. What kind of prison is it? It's a prison where there's a lot of gang members. And there's only two protective management programs in the state of Florida. One's at Columbia, where he is now, and the other one's at Wakulla. So if any situations arise at Columbia again, they may have to move him out of state because there's none others. They consolidated them a couple years ago and we only have two for whatever reason, but he is in a far worse, far more violent prison situation than he was. So is it, do I understand right that, so he was in one prison and then he got moved to another one. And do you know why that, why he was moved? I know what I was told because I have friends that work in administration at the correctional institute at the state. And no one's going to want to hear what I have to say with that, but I was told and you take it for what it's will, not that he was a celebrity. They don't move people because they were celebrities. 
it was because a woman came forward, whether she wanted her five minutes of fame or it's true, a woman correctional officer came forward. She's been there for a very long time. And she said that she saw the murder of Dan Markell and she was jogging past. And so she told the chiefs that day that it, and he, they literally moved him in 48 hours, which is not an easy thing to do in protective management because when you're moved in protective management, it's you're taken in a van, but not by itself. There has to be vehicles up ahead of you and vehicles behind you. And they moved him at taxpayer cost without an investigation. And that's what I was told by the administration. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sonny, any predictions by you? I mean, on one hand, I think, you, you know, he's a wheeler and dealer. He's straddled, according to Jeffrey Lacoste, both sides of the fence. He can, I mean, he's not going to meet the hoity-toity people and prison, but he can deal with people who aren't in his, we don't like to talk about class in this country, but aren't of his class, aren't of his uh, educational background. And he's also, he thinks like, a, you know, the whole family thinks like criminals. So in that way, I think he's going to do well. But on the other hand, he's not very likable. How is, how do you think he's going to do, Sonny? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Am I there? Okay. Yep. Um, I, th I think, well, just like Donna's a cockroach, I think that he's a chameleon um, and he'll be whatever he has to be to get by. Uh, I wonder who's, who, wh were they worried for the CO's safety or Charlie? Like, uh, Dude, what I was the concern up. there? Yeah, Patty, what was the concern of, they of that? They would have done it to protect the correction officer is the theory behind it. What we don't know is why the warden or no one did an investigation. And I don't even care where they move them to. I could care less. But the fact that I get in uh, tax dollars, why would you move that without verifying the story? And I've had now, this is the third person come to me and say that my story, the story I'm saying is accurate. And that there was a mm. recently with the correction officers and they were all giggling about it because they watch the shows about other people's stories. It's not because he's a celebrity. They don't do that. They had one girl move out of Lowell recently, which is Lowell is where Catherine Magbanua is. And the only place that they could send her was South Dakota. It cost $16,000 to move her. So they're not moving people willy nilly, you would think, but in this case, they got rid of them. Maybe they just didn't want them there. Maybe it was too much, but they did. And he's in a far worse, more precarious situation there. And I don't, he's going to have to shed some big bucks to stay healthy. Well, he's, he's got the money. I mean, you, with all these houses and all the stacks of cash and whatever, I mean, you, you still say they got lots of money in real estate, right, Patty? We just don't know they LLCs. Do. Well, they just sold Tortugas for 1.3 million and they had, um, there was never a mortgage on that property and it wasn't homesteaded. So they have to pay some tax on it. But other than that, the proceeds go to Harvey because it was in the trust. So there's a million. At least. Wow. Um, th yeah, that was my understanding is that the reports were that they had 8 million, but Murder by Maestro's done a deep dive and he thinks they had much more. It was a lot of hidden assets at the beginning, at the time of Dan Markell's murder. That's how it was reported that they had 8 million. Murder by Maestro thinks they had had more and it's hidden and moved around. Uh, Patty, what's your 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 understanding? I was of surprised they didn't have more property. I was really surprised because doctors get a lot of leeway and loans when they're buying property. And I was really shocked that they don't have more. They only have a couple investment properties, like one's a 10 unit, and then they have a couple four units, and then that's it. And they're all pretty much crap holes. I mean, there's nothing. Yeah, there. Charlie's a slumlord. Yeah, but Charlie's a slumlord. He's a slumlord yeah. for sure. Why? And I heard the place he lived in wasn't great. Why? What was? What would Will be the Harbor? advantage of that? Even uh, what was his name? Sonny Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think. So. Yeah. And yeah. it was like a frat house and that's what it looked like. And then the one on. Yeah, Tortuga, because he, 
it was it, was not just, updated. It, he, it was probably because of the water access near the islands. Who knows what went back and forth from Jamaica, Bahamas. I told you I served on the grand jury for 18 months, and there was all kinds of um, Bahamas boats with people and, and from Haiti and weapons and boats and guns, and, you know, uh, drugs and people, everything going back and forth. And this is just the percentage that they caught. So you can imagine what got away. So he had deep water access. He was right near Port Everglades. He had boats. He had a, supposedly had a man who paid him dock fees for a whole year in cash. You know, like that's not suspicious. That's how he said he got all that money. He has one guy. And I understand there's dock fees and, you know, pay, you'll pay somebody. You have a friend up north and he says, let me leave the boat there. You can use it when I'm not using it or whatever. Keep it keep it taken care of and, uh, you know, I'll pay you so I don't have to pay a marina. And maybe Charlie used the boat. Maybe the guy paid him money. But I can't imagine a cash amount for a whole year. Hello, Rico, IRS, anybody? <laughs> It, when they ar arrested him, I mean, it was such a crazy, crazy scene. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the Society Pages video about his, where, um, um, you know, it's, it's where he's surrounded by guns and he doesn't come out right away. And then he's coming out in his underwear. I mean, I mean, do you think that they all sort of, so they got a long period where it looked like they might get away with it. Thanks to Meg's, the DA was friends with Weinstein, the family friend who's Wendy's godfather. So it all looked like they were going to get away with it for a while, but what a, a what a paranoia. Do you know what I mean? Well, uh, you know, if you're paranoid because you did something wrong <laughs> and you know, and you're probably doing many other things wrong and none of that came to help him, but he kind of MacGyvered the place. And even June said, you know, he got really weird and he probably was prescribing himself a sedative at night to sleep because how could you sleep knowing that, you know, the FBI could come knocking down your door because you have guilty conscious, you know, I mean, it's, it just makes sense. After the bump, he just went on lockdown, but it didn't, it, it, Wendy just was like walking the streets, you know, and Charlie's on lockdown and uh, it didn't do him any good, did it? But I, I believe he was out of it because he probably took, you know, some, uh, you know, medicine. Because <laughs> he took medicine to, he took medicine to stay up all day because really traveling from Jupiter to Miami, that's a trip. Um, and to work and be on the phones and, you know, grabbing fast food and be in this chair and that dentist and everything and all the traffic and then to settle down at night. So, you know, and you couldn't really drink and drive. So I'm probably sure he had some medicine. And so I'm sure he was out of it. So I don't know what all those weapons did around him. He was, he was probably going to hurt himself. <laughs> I wouldn't trust him. I mean, if I, I if I could make one one prediction, I would say that Donna is telling herself that she just has to do this little time and then she will be free as a bird. Same as Charlie. They all are very positive thinkers because up to this time, up to this time in their life, they've everything has gone their way. And anytime it's anyone's gone against them, it sort of might makes right type of attitude towards it. Threaten, pay off. Um, right. get revenge. And you, you heard a lot of that stories in the clips of Charlie getting revenge on people that were, or going after people that he felt were threatening him in some way. Don't you think that when Donna was at her first hearing in Miami Dade, that she thought she was going home? I yes. she thought she was going home. I thought she was going to be able to bail in her mind. She was going to be able to bail out and she would not be transported to Tallahassee. And she was very shocked when she did not get bail. That was my whole take of the, she's asking, I didn't see, you know, what? I didn't see a what? I didn't see a what? Nobody showed, I mean, that was my favorite part of the whole mm -hmm. arrest tape. I know other people, I mean, of course, the much more dramatic part is her actual arrest where she's saying, oh no, here we go again and all that. But when she's asking about the warrant that she didn't see, 
<laughs> she didn't see the warrant. Like they didn't get what you're fleeing to a non extradition country. I mean, that tape was so delicious of her getting arrested. Speaking of delicious, I mean, I, I I must have watched it 50 times. I mean, that I couldn't believe what I was seeing that we could. Yeah. It's like true crime is very different, is going to a different realm now where we can see all these. Uh, Sherry Davis was asking for about Charlie. Why haven't we seen the tapes of his arrest? Are there are there cameras yeah, the, of that? The feds don't carry cameras. They don't have to. They don't have to have the cameras on them. So there's no cameras. My Thank question you. is though, well, didn't the, the uh, Sonny? You might be able to answer. Wouldn't the sheriff's department have assisted down there in Miami? Oh, absolutely. Yep. They always call the local police and say, you know, because you don't want the neighbor calling saying, "Oh my God, there's a bunch of men in black and with guns knocking down my neighbor's door." You know, mm -hmm. so they usually call the local and and you know, like when I was on the grand jury again, because there's just so many, there's so many like alphabet agencies, we have the Freshwater Commission and the Game Commission, and we have the FBI and the CIA. I mean, so many, Border Patrol, all of this um, that would come in and testify in all their uniforms. I mean, the things that these people see, I just, I don't know how they look at other people, some of these FBI agents, how they, the things they see in here, how they look at us and don't see the worst because they see the worst, you know, it's just with the, the predators and all that. I mean, I, I just, whoever raised them or however they're born, I, I bless them because <laughs> that takes something else. I mean, I might have to get up when I go to the Sarah Boone trial, which she has, you know, taped him um, uh, leaving this earth in the suitcase. I, I, it's just so heartbreaking. It's just like watching Danny walk into the, the gym. I, I, you know, what's going to happen. I, 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 I can't stop. I can't physically stomach that. And I'm glad that I can't because, uh, you know, I'm not as tough as I thought I was. So that's good to know. <laughs> Every time I that drive past Premier, case. I think of that. Every time I drive past Premier, I think of it. The gym that he went to. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't let's go just in. watch a little of that opening together, shall we? I mean, the of Donna's arrest and the warrant. Uh, just watch a little bit of it. <laughs> When did they issue a warrant? So what happened is we have to take we have to take you to our warrants room for that information to get entered, and then after that gets entered, before we can take you to uh, to the jail, to the local jail. Okay, because I didn't know there was a warrant. How would I know that? Well, we wouldn't have been you wouldn't know that, Donna. Donna, they're not going to tell you you have a warrant. You were fleeing to a non-extradition country. They're not going to tell you, honey. They're not going to tell you about that warrant when you're fleeing. Aren't they supposed to inform me if there was a warrant? Donna, sweetheart, they're not going to inform you. You're a criminal now. You're not a fancy lady no more. You're a criminal. Sorry, Donna. It's all over. It's all over. You're in cuffs. Do you get it? You get it? She still doesn't get it. She's in La La Land. <laughs> she really didn't get it did she would you put the window down that's what he says she goes would you put the window down and the officer's like like he's gonna put he's never putting the window down but he was so nice to her he goes well ma'am it's raining i'm like what why is she even asking these questions this is so crazy so crazy it was a it is she's hot she's really. cold yeah she was polite. She really was. I get, I didn't think she'd be as polite as she was when she was in that car. I thought she'd have those, more defiance. She was quite polite. Those were Miami Dade police. That you know, they, that was Miami Dade police. I mean, you know, Pat was there, but mm -hmm. the people with the handcuffs. That's who's that's who's um, body cam we saw because if. P Pat Sanford was in everybody's body cam. If he was wearing, we wouldn't have seen him. <laughs> so I found out that the cost of the video, which is really what I want to see, and the video from Donna being transported from Miami Dade to Tallahassee is like nine hundred dollars. Oh. I think I might put a GoFundMe out. Just oh to yeah, I got it. because I got five on it. She pled. She pled dehydrated, so they had to call first responders in. Around Gainesville, I just think it's so funny. I, I, I think she that. wanted to stop in 
Yeah, you do. Roberta has a theory about the water. It cracks me up. <laughs> I don't even remember what my theory was. What was my theory? Well, what's with everybody needing water all the time? Oh, you that's know? right. That's right. When we and were then growing I, up, we, we went through the whole day without drinking water. We gave whole speeches without drinking water. What is this water and hydration <laughs> obsession of the young people? Well, I think we, we didn't drink. Uh, we didn't eat all those processed foods back then, I know. And we certainly didn't eat fast food. That's I just remember drinking water out of the neighbor's hose. Whoever had the closest house, that's where you went and got a drink of water. That's what I remember. But... Um, I think that it, it just says none of the officers um, needed a comfort break. So why would she? You know, like, why didn't they? I think she wanted to have one last stop in Gainesville because that was where her and Harvey were that night before they went and gave, you know, picked up the boys there when they got their their prize. You know, remember after they dropped off the money, her and her, they stopped in uh, Gainesville. I think she just wanted a trip down memory lane. So funny. Yeah. And so B Rabbit's asking, what's with the OBGYN? I think you're talking about Graber being hired by to be part of Donna's team. I mean, he's like the unofficial PR. Who knows if he's being hired or not? But certainly he's gone out, Ben Graber and former former. Polit uh, political candidate and gone out and written op-eds in her favor. She was just a grandma, great family, meaning the, the argument is she's not the kind of person who would do something, which if you follow true crime cases is not a good argument because nobody is. Everyone seems shocked except for the really, really dark figures um, in this. Ted Bundy, everyone thought he was great. So... <laughs> um, uh, it, it sort of remains to be seen it, how how Donna's PR is going, and it looked like Rashbaum was starting out doing interviews, and then he pulled out of Deep Dive True Crime Mentor Lawyers Channel interview. He did the interview with uh, Surviving the Survivor podcast, and then it was such a disaster he he didn't continue. So, I mean, how do you defend someone like this? I mean, is there any good strategy? Patty? I don't, I don't, I'm just not that creative. Other, than, I'm a truth teller, so it's I just can't even imagine. I just... Well, his role is to, at, at, at minimum, his role is to make sure her rights are protected. And that's it's what he has out. to do. And we, we I told you that um, on one other show, we saw him, we were at the... The third hotel, we were at the hotel where uh, Rashbaum and Catherine, his assistant, Kate Myers, were staying. And it just so happened every time we were out walking the dog or coming back from somewhere, um, they were coming or going. And after the trial, after Charlie's convicted, he was on the phone with his son saying, well, you know, you win some, you lose some, or you can't win them all or something. And at first I'm thinking, well, that was such a bad moment. You know, his kids saw him lose uh, on, on TV or whatever. Um, but then uh, John Steinbeck, you know, pointed out to me, you know, a man's point of view, which was, um, well, I got paid. It doesn't really matter. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, you know, but that's still coming home. I still got my money. I'll see you tomorrow. And they were gone the next day. Like he didn't even go to the, he didn't even hang with Charlie at the jail that night when he got convicted because we, we came home, we had to take care of the dog and they were getting home. And then we went to eat when we came back, they were coming back uh, in different clothes. So they had left and went back to eat. And then in the morning we saw them leaving. Uh, so he didn't even like hang with Charlie and, comfort him and say, you know, sorry, it didn't go our way. Uh, we'll do an appeal. You know, Charlie said this was, you know, the Super Bowl of, of Tallahassee. You know, he thinks he was the star of the show and everything. He's nothing. Like, get out of here. Next. <laughs> Next. Does anybody have any <laughs> questions? I'm in a I mean, we've been going for an almost an hour and a half now. If anybody has any questions, I'll just wait for the chat to to um, catch up. 
Um, well, Patty's going to talk about why the hotels are so expensive and how everybody's hitting her up for where's a good Airbnb to stay for this trial. So I think I'm going to sit this trial out and go to the Sarah Boone trial and Crime Con I got coming up and I'm moving to Vero Beach and then I'll do the Shanna Gardner trial, which is a death penalty woman trial, Roberta. That's I, interesting. I, I got I got you on. I, I hope you'll call in, check in, tell us what's going on. Murder by Maestro has a question. Hold on one second. Let me pull it up. Good work, Murder by my, my Maestro. He's a he's he's got a great channel. Sure you got does. some great. Uh, you have you both have great people. Thanks. And thank you so much for thank you. I appreciate all and thank you for all the moderators, Miss Shorty, uh Tommy, uh the society page for and murder by Meister for moderating. Uh I heard Charlie had his own police car. Any idea what home that would be parked outside? Hmm. He had a limo, <laughs> but I don't believe he had a police vehicle. But he did have a limo, and he had a limo business for a while. But that went belly up, too. He also wanted to buy a go-kart that he could park out front. So I think it was the Whale Harbor house. Because um, Law Bell V did a little drive-by, and she did the go-kart part and said, here's where he wanted to park the car. And it was uh, more casual. There wasn't, like... It was an extra piece of grass for parking. You could tell people parked on it. So he had a driveway in front of the garage and then they didn't pave it, but you could tell in front of the berm in front of the house where people parked. So he liked cars. He liked fast cars. He liked, oh, I, 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 he thought he was everything. He was a cop. He was a go-kart rider. He's a, um, you know, a, a, a fishing captain. He, he's still trying to find himself. Sweepstakes, how to really win, says, uh, with the $2 super chat. Now you only need 89, 898 for Donna Adelson's dehydration. I got video. five on it. <laughs> All right. I'll be sure to get that to Patty. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you. Uh, Patty, where can people find you? Uh, I have a channel called Patty's Playhouse. And it's actually a radio show that we do. And um, so I just started a little true crime channel. And thank you for allowing me to mention that. That's very nice of you. And um, that's it. And you can just find me in Tallahassee. That's where you can find she me. Also, she also has a radio show. Yeah. yeah. By the same yeah. name, but it's real estate focused. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well. And um, next trial for you, Sonny, is you just said is it, you're going to... Are you going to be watching Sarah this? Boone? Sarah Boone. When does that start? Uh, scheduled for May, which is, it said May 15th. Uh, and then Crime Con's at the end of May, but, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. Orlando is not far from Vero Beach to me. And so I'll go there and I will report in and I'll be there for jury selection. That's very interesting to me uh, to see the people and, and get to know the people in the town and that kind of thing. Like I did with Patty. I mean, I saw her and I was, what drew me to Patty right away was her earrings. And <laughs> she, she had really nice dangly gemstone earrings. I had just started making jewelry and I was like, Oh, those are really nice. And then the next day she had a similar pair, but a different color gemstone. I was like, all right, this lady's got a jewelry wardrobe. I love it. <laughs> I do. And she's totally nice. approachable and very easy to talk to just like Roberta. It's just, you know, you guys are great. Your community's great. And we have to keep justice for Dan Markell and everybody who is seeking that. And I, I hope that the Markells find what they need. I hope that the boys are reunited with people who love and care about them truly and um, realize that they're more than just pawns. And I hope that if Wendy does not get arrested, that she will live her life in misery and childless. So because they're going to say bye. Give, uh, like uh, a, a little bit of, I have butterflies in my stomach. I've been listening to Roberta glass for a very long time. And so when I got the text message yesterday, I was like, it, it just reclaims me a little bit. So thank you very <laughs> much. 
very uh, much. That's so nice. It's that's so nice, really Patty. Nice. So this is going to be a little bit of a long goodbye here. So just, I think I have a top cat has says, do, do you think Alec Morris will do jury selection? Uh, my I thing do. is no, I, I think I he do. will do it. Or, I, or do too. I don't think we're going to see Dubin in there. I think that was a disaster. I mean, not disaster. It didn't help them. I, it certainly for all that money, I don't think he comes cheap. Um, yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a good investment for them. The yeah. person it wasn't a disaster for was Dugan. Right. right. He walked away with a lot, a lot of money. Sherry Davis, thank you so much. I'll get that $4.99 to Pat for Patty for her for her fund and uh for fun for that video. No. It would be interesting to see. So and is uh, it the video of happened? him in the it's her in the van, the whole ride up? Yeah, it, she was in a car. She wasn't in a van. Jeez. Oh, yeah, she was in a van. I lied. She was in a van. Okay. okay. And right. she was the only prisoner, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely contribute to that. I was really? going to follow it up there, but they go as stealth in the middle of the night, so you don't know. Well, it took like 14 hours because she, they had to stop. So that's why I was like, oh, I need to see this. <laughs> All right. Can you imagine the question and answer period that she went through? <laughs> All right. Have a great night. Again, Patty, thank you so much for doing this. Sunny, oh, oh you're always such a great guest. Uh, I'll see you back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Have a great night, everybody. Don't go anywhere, Patty and Sunny.